This video is going to show you how to set up and break down a chocolate fountain. This is a completed chocolate fountain. This is the way that it should look at the end of our process. Um, major things that you should remember. Wear street clothes when you're setting this up and when you're breaking this down. It is a very messy process. Um, do not wear your uniform. Um, you will be getting in your cleanup and setup box, which we will go over in a, in a few minutes, an apron. I suggest wearing it. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have a linen and a table set up before you put your fountain on um, to make sure that you have enough room. It is a possibility that you're going to have your fountain on the coffee and dessert table. Sometimes um, it will be on the 48 inch table, which it is on right now, and other times it will be on your coffee and dessert table. Another thing to remember is that this is a very expensive piece of equipment. Um, it is made of stainless steel. Um, please be sure not to scratch or dent it at any point during this process because it will affect the flow of our chocolate as well as the fitting of the pieces um, while putting it together. Another thing while um, putting this together is to remember that cleanliness is very important because people will be eating out of this fountain. So rather not have dirty hands while setting this up. Um, also, when you're putting this together, before you put this together, make sure that you have all your pieces. They should all be on your checklist. Um, open up all your cases, open up your cleanup setup box, and make sure all your pieces are there because if you do not have them, um, it's going to waste your time while putting it together as well as breaking it down because timeliness is a very important factor in um, setting the fountain up. All right, things that you should be getting in your truck along with your two cases that contain your fountains are a clean up and set up box. A clean up and set up box. And you should also be aware that you are going to need, what you can get from your chef, is a white tub as well as some soap. Inside of our box, you should be getting around five to six plastic cups, a new sponge, a sieve, which also is called a china cap, Oops. about five to six um, bar rags, because it's going to be quite messy, an apron for yourself, <laughs> a spatula for scraping your chocolate off of the fountain and lastly a four inch hotel pan this is for putting your chocolate in at the end of the night so that it can be taken back to the shop that is after it is um, strained through your sieve to make sure that the food that the guests have dipped into your chocolate fountain is cleanly taken out of the chocolate Let's just start off with what um, equipment you're going to expect when you're um, having a chocolate fountain set up. This round case is your basin, which is the base of the fountain. You're going to um, also get included in this is your manual, just for um, extra information if you're lost on any of the procedures. Um, let me pull out the basin for you. It is made of stainless steel. It's quite heavy because you have the motor as well inside. So it's important to remember that when you're cleaning this, that this can't go into a sink because you're going to ruin the electrical workings. The knobs that you should be concerned about are this. This knob, which should always be set at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It is the perfect temperature for melting chocolate. Um, your button to your left of the dial um, is your preheat off button and on button. The preheat button should be turned on an hour before the party, and when the chocolate is poured in, the on button should be turned on. Your container that your basin is um, sitting in when it comes to um, the party has this foam strip, and it is important to not throw it away. It's to help um, keep it from um, rocking around um, during transport, so make sure you keep it in the, in the case and replace it when you're repacking. This case is uh, the main components of the top of the fountain, uh, which sits in the basin. 
you have some clips that you have to be concerned about. Oh. What should be included in this case is your crown of the fountain, which sits this way on top of this cylinder that's right here, like a crown, wide part on top. You should also have a scrubby brush for cleaning. This is your level. This is a very important uh, piece of equipment that should be included in your um, set up here. Um, you're going to be putting this um, on top of your base to make sure that it's level. Otherwise, if it's not or your table is not level, the chocolate won't flow properly. All right, so this is the way the case is supposed to look. And it is strapped down. And now we are going to put it together. This is your stabilizer. It's plastic. Now let's take the tears off, making sure that we're not scratching or denting anything because this fountain um, fits together precisely and any sort of dent or scratch is going to interrupt the flow of chocolate as well. spiral rod. This fits into your stainless steel cylinder. It comes into the, in the case inside of your cylinder, so be careful when you're lifting it up that it doesn't slide out. It's very sharp on these edges. So let's fit it back in. Be careful, like I said. What you want to do is put your other hand at the bottom here so that you can lift it up. All right, so it's important to secure your spiral rod while you're holding the cylinder so that it doesn't slip out. And also it helps with lifting and putting it onto the base because you're going to lock it. Let's show you where it is right here. There is two knobs right here that fit into these two slots. So, as well as these four posts fit into these these four holes. It's easiest to hold it like this with it sticking out a little bit so you can guide it onto the pegs and then rest your cylinder into its correlating pegs. And push down so that it's secure. The next step is to put on your plastic stabilizer. Don't forget this piece, it might be easy to overlook. It goes in um, lip side up. You can see that there's a little lip on there. You see? Mm -hmm. Alright, you're placing that into the top and around the spiral. It slides in. There we go. And then on top of that, we're going to be placing our crown, widest part on top. Now your fountain is complete. Okay, so the final thing that you should be doing, or rather you can actually do this before you put your tiers and your cylinder on, is to make sure that it's level. Um, as you can see, you can tell it's level because the bubble is within the two black lines. If it isn't level, a solution is to um, adjust the feet on the fountain here. And like I said before, it might be easier to check its level before you put your tears on because it's a lighter weight and you can adjust it better at that point. It is now time to preheat our fountain, so we're going to go ahead and plug in. 
as well as turning our button to preheat. Now that our fountain is preheated, it's time to go let our chef know that we're ready for our chocolate. Now that our uh, fountain is preheated, we're ready for our chocolate, and you can tell it's preheated because it's warm to the touch in here. If it was cold, the, the chocolate would solidify and wouldn't run through the fountain correctly. So you got to make sure that it, it is warm before you put the chocolate in. The chocolate that she's pouring into the basin here is the correct consistency because we add oil to our chocolate so that it flows um, nice and smooth over our tears. The way that this works is the chocolate is taken from the bottom here in the basin through our spiral up to the top to our crown and then it pours over tier to tier to tier. Um, you will know that if, um, if it's not totally covering all your tiers when it's flowing down that there is not enough chocolate and then you might want to talk to your chef about adding chocolate. Okay. Now that our chocolate is in here we want to immediately turn our switch to on so that our chocolate flows through our fountain. You can see it being sucked up into our cylinder now. And there it goes. You can see that maybe that it's a little bit thick. The way to correct this is to add oil. So let's address some of the problems that we can see with what is going on with this chocolate fountain at this point. Um, we did correct the consistency with oil, the chef added. Um, but it looks like because of there's gaps here, which aren't that big, but um, still need to be corrected by adding more chocolate by the chef. So you would let him or her know that that's something that needs to be addressed. Also, we can take a look at the fountain straight on and you can notice by the shape of it that it looks like it is off, um, off balance. <clears throat> and this can be adjusted by the feet again at the bottom of the fountain. So at this point, uh, we've adjusted legs, we've adjusted table legs to make sure that our chocolate is flowing smoother and it looks much better at this point. Um, another thing that we want to address when you are putting the chocolate in the fountain to be aware of dripping on the tablecloth. Um, it's probably best, see we were mess, a little bit messy here. When the chef or you are putting the chocolate into the fountain, maybe put down a bar rag. Another option other than your bar rag is to uh, put a trash bag. You can get one from the chef or from the bar so that it's plastic coated so that you don't get chocolate on your linens and destroy the nice effect of uh, your table before the guests see it. Marshmallows are you want them? Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, marshmallows are. Oh my God, this is so heavenly. Mm. Oh, look at this. Mm. It makes something so much bigger. <laughs> Actually, the first step before you shut it down is to make sure you have all of your equipment to carry your fountain pieces to the kitchen to clean up. So your white tub, your cleanup box, which is under your table, should all be gathered up and brought to your table. Next step is to turn it off that stops the flow. All right, now, now that we have our apron on, we're gonna take one of the bar cloths to just place it down here in our path of, um, from the basin to our hotel pan while we scoop it out to kind of make sure that we don't make more of a mess on our linen. And then we're gonna get our spatula out and we're gonna start, I know that I'm short, there's a lot of people that are short here, so if you need somebody that has longer arms than you, bring them over by all means. You want to start from the top and then work your way down to the bottom because the chocolate's just going to keep pouring on down. So you're going to do your best job to scrape chocolate off. And be careful because it will spray if you are not careful. Next step is to scoop out the chocolate from the basin. We are providing you with plastic cups. Um, 
You can use a ladle. I wouldn't suggest it because it is stainless steel and ladle is stainless steel and steel on steel causes scratches and that is not something that we want. So it's just as easy to use plastic cup. Start this over, sorry. <laughs> Even though this is a timely process of putting it in here, you do want to do it as fast as possible so that your chocolate doesn't set because it makes cleaning up the fountain harder and we want to be as neat as possible if you can be neat with this process at all. Um, when you get to the point of you can't really scoop anymore, use your spatula to bring down the chocolate from the edges so that you can get a hold of it better. So we've scooped out as much chocolate as possible. Um, like I said, you're not going to get every last drop out of there. Um, it will happen when you get to the sink. Um, and you can tilt the basin on its side above the sink and use your spatula to scrape some more out. This is just for carrying purposes and for so that you're not slopping chocolate all over your venue where your wedding is happening. Um, as you can see, we have we've sieved all this chocolate. You can see that there is big old chunks of food in there. This is not um, to be brought back to the shop. This is to be thrown out into your garbage can. This hotel pan, however, is to be brought back to your chef because we do reuse our chocolate. So the things that you can put into your white bin are your sieve with your food. So first piece to come off is the crown. It is heavy, so we're putting this in our white tub. Next piece is your stabilizer. Make sure you're not dripping chocolate everywhere. Now all of your tears. Smallest. Be sure to not scratch. <laughs> Okay, to get the rest of your chocolate out, um, bring it to your sink, put it on a ledge, and you're going to tilt it. It's going to be quite heavy, so I'm going to take some finagling. You're going to use your spatula to dump it into the sink. Try and get as much as possible out. It will make cleaning much faster. The rest out. To get the rest out, you're going to put some soap on your sponge. Maybe not that much. And you're going to soap it up. You want to make sure that you get around all the pegs in the middle. That's where the, most of the chocolate um, gets stuck at. It congeals. You don't want to send it back to the shop with chocolate in all the crevices. Now that we've washed it with soapy water and then rinsed it um, with clean water, which you're using this with the sponge, not submerging it into the sink. We've polished it, dried it completely.